Welcome to Championship Saturday here in the Big South Conference. A trip to the NCAA Tournament on the line today as we have the top seeded Longwood Lancers and the upstart four seed, the Winthrop Eagles, soaring into the championship out of the elimination round. Not had control issues all day. This ball is down for a base hit. One run is in. Here comes the go ahead run. And Winthrop has jumped in front. Scoring all the way from second is Cameron Culp, and the Eagles have the lead. Play as that is. Whitcomb stays alive. Now she drills a pitch to left. This ball's got some legs, and see you later. A second chance for Whitcomb, and she delivers the go ahead grand slam. What a two-out spot for Brooke Ellison, who delivers all the way to the warning track. The Winthrop Eagles have tied it, and it's a two-out double by Brooke Ellison. There's a good swing by Dorgan, and it stays fair. All the way to the wall. Here comes Oaks around third, and safe. Moving and grooving around the bags, it's the player of the year in to score and a 2-0 lead for Upstate. That ball is fair. What a battle won by Dorgan. Two runs come in to score, and an RBI single for Alicia Dorgan as the Spartans strike for two. Longwood, one strike away from the title. And here's the 2-2 from Backstrom. Right back to the pitcher. And the play is made at first. Would you believe it? The Lancers, for the fourth time in five years, are your Big South Tournament champions. Christina Bagerstaff, the Pitcher of the Year. Her last loss, by the way, was against Longwood back in the middle of April. She has been rock solid since. And now here she is trying to push her club into the championship final on Saturday. Longwood chasing two runs, and it's none other than Kalen Bug Batten to lead things off. The Bug, as they call her, a four year savvy veteran here behind the plate from Kenley, North Carolina, about 30 minutes outside of Bowie's Creek. She showed off her arm strength already. Now trying to show off the bat as she misses for strike two. There's that rise ball again. It looks like it's, you know, belt high, a good pitch to offer at, and then it explodes up and out of the zone and comes in unreachable territory as a hitter. Christina Bagerstaff, two strikeouts today, giving up just one hit. And Batten able to stay alive. In fact, Bug Batten has two walk-off hits against Longwood this year as part of that series sweep back on March 23rd and the 24th. Big reason why the Lancers are in the one seed in this tournament. And it looks like Biggerstaff is not messing around here this afternoon. Her offense gives her a run in the third and now the fourth. And here she works with a lead coming off a complete game shutout yesterday. And when she works with a lead and really this whole upstate team, that. Neither one of them have had to come back a whole lot this year, but she's a closing tight pitcher, no doubt. There goes Bug Batten in the left field. Just the second hit of the day for the Lancers. And leading off the inning, the senior converts. It's patience, battling with two strikes, fought off a couple tough rise balls. Then you wait for yours. You get a breaking ball you can drive. Didn't miss it, didn't try to do too much with it, serves it into left center. A leadoff single to start a rally for Longwood. So from one base hit to the girl with the other base hit today, Carly Donovan. And that is called a strike. Donovan has been so locked in this year, hitting 335. That leads the club. Now trying to move along Bug Batten with nobody out. And Evan, this is where the Lancers have got to take advantage. They've had opportunities. Lead-off runner aboard in the second in Donovan. Weren't able to get her around. And then they had that walk in the third, had a chance to do something with that with one out top of the order. Unable to get her into scoring position. 
until late in that frame. So that, it's that situational softball. Upstate has been really good in that regard so far in this ball game, but that's where the difference has been. Close to a similar amount of chances, but who comes through with runners on base so far? It's been the Spartans. And now better than the hottest hitter here for Longwood. And Carly Donovan. Donovan, up the middle she goes. And back-to-back -back hits for the Longwood Lancers. Something you don't see too often against Christina Biggerstaff. But Longwood's coming alive here this second time around the order. Important to note in what could be a sack bunt situation with Jacobson coming up. Remember, she tried to get a bunt down in her last at back. Couldn't do it, swung away, popped it up. So it, it's, it's funny, isn't it, how the game sort of works itself out? All right, you didn't get it down last time. Now in a bigger spot with more traffic on the base pass, can you get it down? Here's the bunt. It is down. Bigger staff to third, and she gets the out. Bug bat not sliding into third, and that may have cost her with Kathy Riley right up in her face. Well, I tell you what, this is a risky play from Bigger Staff, but there was no hesitation. She knew where she wanted to go right away. Bang, bang, play at third, and that is a monster, monster out. Because if she's a little late or hesitates a bit, now they're loaded with nobody out. Really, heads up play by Bigger Staff. It's one of those, if it works out, it's a great play. So there's out number one. Casey Carr, the shortstop after the first pitch. And that is off the glove of Helton. Everyone is safe. And the base is loaded on a bloop single. Here come the Lancers with three hits in the inning. How big was that play from Bigger Staff now? That drove in a run. If you flash back to the play where she got the bunt at third, but it's a great effort at center here. Had to come a long way, did Helton, nearly got there, but the Lancers starting to execute with runners on now. And now more traffic, more things as a pitcher you have to worry about now in the runner at third. Pass ball, wild pitch, especially with the rise exploding too high to the backstop, something you have to be cognizant of. This is the sophomore, Leah Powell. Longwood searching for an answer after the Spartans scored their second run in the fourth. And now Kathy Riley is going to call time. And looks to be making a substitution here in this fourth inning. And a special pitch runner is going to come in for the Lancers. This is Mason Basikis coming in. So with the speed of Batsikis now at second base, in for Jacobson in the DP, that's the tying run at second base. Well, that's why you make that move, because a base hit, now you might get two instead of just one, and less risk of an outfield assist getting you out at the plate. But if you're upstate here, you have to know the scouting report a little bit. Powell prone to the strikeout, has struck out 29 times this year. That's the most on this Lancer club. And if you're pal, you got to erase that. You're just trying to put a ball in play here. Make something happen. So USC Upstate came into this game with a 1.6 ERA as a staff. Now working with a 2-0 lead. And there's a deep drive off the bat of Powell. That's going to drift out of play. Best our camera crew as well. The count is 2-1. It's a win for Bickerstaff to get her to go after that pitch ahead 2-0. Was in, in, to get him to chase a pitch like that, that, that's a pitcher's pitch, so they call it. It's one that you can't do a whole lot with. And now two and one, a very different count, but still the ability to be a little choosy here if you're Powell in the box. Powell fights it off her hands. And as the count works even, let's not forget, Leah Powell leads this club in strikeouts. Not a great on-base percentage, but what a time to change all that here against the pitcher of the year in Christina Bakerstan. And we mentioned Powell trying to be patient. Doesn't walk a lot either, only nine of them so far this year. Bakerstaff with a 2-2. Two -two. And gets the strikeout. That's her third of the game and her biggest to this point. Well, when you're in a jam as a pitcher and you get two strikes, you go to your best pitch. And for bigger staff, that's the rise. Look at all the late movement just exploding up and out of the zone. No way as a hitter you can be on top of that pitch 
and one that if you let it go, it's probably ball three, but it doesn't look like a ball coming out. It looks like a very hittable pitch. And that's one second, third time through the order. Hitters got to start noticing it's not going to end up a strike. It's hard to tell your mind that, but a strikeout pitcher getting one when she absolutely had to have it. Just want to note there was an illegal pitch called, so the count is 1 0. And now I believe the count is 2 0 at the moment. So indeed, the illegal pitch makes it 2 0, and how this changes the complexion of the at bat for Chelsea Whitcomb. Called strike by Luke Lusco, the home putt umpire. And now for Whitcomb, her eight RBI this year. But Lancers all over the base paths. Here with three hits in the inning. Wickham a senior, so she carries all that experience in big spots just like this. And takes a huge hack to work the count even. So if you're Longwood, falling behind two to nothing is the top seed in this tournament. A convincing 10 to two win over Winthrop yesterday to put you in this spot. And now the top seed trailing by two here against the number two seed in Upstate. The two best teams from the first weekend of conference play playing for a trip to the final. And fittingly, the count is full to Whitkin. Also of note, mentioning it was a 2-0 game, the runners particularly at first and second, they're off with the pitch here. So a base hit almost assuredly scores you two. What a moment for Christina Baker's staff. Here's the payoff pitch. And off the glove of Alyssa Oaks, it's a foul ball. The catcher almost squeezed it, and instead we'll see another. Well, Oaks frustrated with herself. She saw her little pat in the glove there. She thought she put a hand down. And that's, that's a tough play as a catcher to hang on, but you like to see that if you're the coaching staff at Upstate. She expects to get it, even as tough of a play as that is. Whitcomb stays alive. Now she drills a pitch to left. This ball's got some legs, and see you later. A second chance for Whitcomb, and she delivers the go-ahead Grand Slam. Wow, a team that doesn't typically hit the long ball has just hit their biggest one of the season. And this was a no-doubter. It's a mistake. She was in a long battle and she didn't miss it. Well out of here to left, and just like that, the script has flipped. It's now the Lancers in front by two. That's her second home run of the year, and the Lancer faithful love it, as here come the power bats of Chelsea Whitcomb. Boy, Christina Biggerstaff, this is a rare moment for the senior giving up the four runs, and also giving up the lead here in the fourth. And something, we mentioned how good Upstate has been up in front in ball games. And it just had the makings, or the feeling of a typical bigger staff outing, but we talked about coming through with people on base, situational hitting, and the biggest hit of the game goes to the Lancers. Now to the nine spot, Destiny Martinez who worked out a walk her first time up. And with Martinez up at the plate, Upstate very aware of what she can do in the box. And with her speed, look at the infield shift there. Expecting the slap. And now this is important for bigger staff too. It's still just a two run game. And you've seen yourself how quickly that can turn, but you gotta recompose yourself. Get back to that form that you had throughout much of this ball game and give your offense a chance to go work for you. Let's not forget that illegal pitch as well. Yeah. They've worked the count to three and two. And now for the Spartans, a rare call to the bullpen. You don't see bigger staff exit a game too early, but action getting loose just in case. Big reason why, the grand slam from Whitcomb. And now if you're Longwood playing with so much confidence here in the fourth, you take the lead and you hit a home run against the pitcher of the year in bigger staff. Well, you mentioned that bullpen too. Aaron Hill, not a bad option. A 2.2 ERA and 14-9 and record in her own right. And that would likely be who they turn to. And it's hard in a game like this where you're trying to fight for a spot in a championship game, but as a coach in a double elimination style tournament, you got to say, okay, 
how, what, is there a margin that, okay, if it gets to three or four, you say, all right, let's say bigger staff for a, an elimination type game later tonight and limit Longwood's looks, because if you win that, you face the same Lancers team tomorrow having to win two. I'll make it short and simple. You play one game at a time right now, Kyle, right. and given the way both these offenses can swing it, we are far from done here in an exciting fourth inning. Upstate made it two to nothing in the top half, and the grand slam with two outs has put Longwood out in front. And Baker's staff gets out of the jam with the punch out. Not before Longwood takes the lead for the first time. We go to the fifth. Spartans trailing by two. Station to get social with the big sound. Learn new details about what's going on or share your own experiences as you join our growing network of fans on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and more. Follow us at the Big South Conference. Bottom of the third inning. Three combined hits, but nothing to show for it here on the scorecard. Now, if you're Longwood, it's the bottom third of the order with Leah Powell, the second baseman, to get things started. And we saw on the other end, and Sydney Gay really took advantage and got on a roll with the bottom part of the Winthrop order. Let's see if Watson can do the same thing, attacking the bottom hitters in the order and trying to make it a quick inning to try to gather momentum. Leah Powell and these Lancers, not the most prolific offensive team, in the regular season, but how about here in the Big South Tournament, the Lancers hitting 340. Their bats have come to play. And it's not with a lot of extra base hits, and really the whole tournament's sort of been that way, hasn't it? It's a lot of small ball. And we got a hit by pitch here for Leah Powell. She's gonna reach the lead off the third, and for the second straight inning, the Lancers have a lead off runner on. And Coach Riley before said, we are at our best when we get runners on base and are able to put pressure. He said it doesn't matter how, whether it's with walks or hit batsmen. And well, that back arm yeah. of Powell snuck very close to the plate, but no argument from either side. As now Madison Watson having to pitch out of some trouble here in the third. And here comes the home run hero from yesterday in Chelsea Whitcomb. And Powell with some good speed over at first. Let's not forget the Lancers this year, 99 stolen bases. Tried for 100 earlier today, but nothing to show for it back in that second inning. I think an area with Whitcomb here, especially if you get a ball two, where it's a 2-0 scenario, may, might put a hit and run on just to try to get something in motion offensively. Here's a bunt from Whitcomb. Covering at third and safe at first base is Whitcomb. Beating the throw by Ashley Westbrooks, and the small ball pays off big time for the Lancers. Well, and you sit there and think, all right, what could Winthrop have done differently to maybe prevent a bunt single? But it, this is a beautiful bunt. It dies right in front of the plate. That is a long way to ask your third baseman to go to make a play. And she really handled it pretty clean. It's just flat out speed. Wickham, 30 stolen bases on the year and a chance to flash it. Gets a bunt single now. Longwood in business. Now this is Longwood softball. A hit batter, a bunt single, and now Destiny Martinez to the plate. And you can already tell runners are in motion. Defense is being alert. This is exactly what Longwood wants to do here in the third. Well, it's a stereotypical Longwood bunt situation. Martinez just a 191 hitter at the plate, and you get the top of the order right behind her. Her job, get those runners to second and third. The bunt is down, but it's a foul ball. Rolled at the plate. No, the batter no, is called out. out. Yeah. As she was out of the box when she hit the ball. So now they're at first and the runners and will have to retreat. Exactly, Kyle. So what a decision here. And while we have one out now in the inning, let's show you how this play unfolds because. The batter has to stay in the box when she makes contact. Even a part of the foot on the line. You see it right there. She stepped across. It wasn't necessarily designed. It was more laterally forward, but a good call by the umpire. So the runners retreat. Here's one out. And to the top of the order we go with Alexis Whalen. And Aaron Summers, let's talk more here about the catcher, Logan Webb. She's been crucial to their success. Winthrop catcher Logan Webb was forced into action when their usual starter Taylor Charlton went out with an injury. 
But the Linthrop Eagles, they run a battery system. So Webb is more comfortable catching Kylie Majet, who's a left-handed pitcher, being thrown into a situation where she is now catching Maddie Watson, who is a right-handed pitcher, has been a tough adjustment for her. But the two are starting to work better together as this tournament has moved on. Webb and Charlton work really well together. So Coach Riley said that when Charlton went out, it was almost like Webb herself lost her left arm. She put a lot of pressure on herself to step up and do really well in this tournament in place of Charlton and for both of them. Struggled a little bit against Longwood in that first start that she had, but it's done a lot better as the tournament's moved on. Well, Aaron, even during that moment, we saw the big hug and embrace yeah. from Webb and Watson. These two are getting along just fine come tournament time. But a big spot here for the Lancers with the top of the order. Here's a drive off the bat of Whalen, and it goes foul. But we're starting to see here some big time swings from Longwood in this inning. If Winthrop gets out of this inning, it would be a huge momentum swing, and it would be a missed opportunity for the Lancers. And you have to look back to Martinez when she steps out of the box. When she hits that butt, it's an out. You don't move the runners. Works effectively like a strikeout. And now well ahead of the count, one, two, is Watson here looking for a strikeout. Nice self-defense swing by Alexis Whalen, who not only was on the all-freshman team, she made the all-conference team as well this past season. How about the bat discipline from a freshman? It was fooled by the changeup, slowed it down to get a piece and see another pitch. Really, really good stuff. The count remains one and two to Whalen, who chokes up before this pitch. One, two from Watson. And that one's tipped foul. So the at-bat continues here with one out. This is a Longwood team that has found their confidence at just the right time. Of course, they've won 18 straight conference series, but now they need to win just one of these two games to take the title. It is a pitcher in Watson. You're looking for a strikeout. One of the toughest hitters in the order to strike out in Wayland. This ground ball gets through, and coming around third is Leah Powell. The throw is late. The out is recorded in third, but not before the Lancers strike for the first run. Well, you see the competitor, Coach Riley, is frustrated that her runner's out at third. But really good heads up play. And here's a freshman two strike approach. Look how far she's choked up, almost to the end of the grip. It just serves it up the middle, gives what she gives her. This is really a good effort in center. Charging in was Lowers, made a strong throw. And again, it's Logan Webb with a key play. It may not go in as an RBI single, but that a big second out at third base. So two outs now for Jordan Clark. And Clark, another savvy veteran in this Longwood lineup. The senior out of Virginia leads her team in multi-hit games. When she's performing well, this offense takes it to another level. And it's one of those, these type of situations where the bottom of the lineup got a board and then it's trying to drive them in with one or two outs and she's really embellished that role. 41 driven in. You look at 81 RBIs in the first two hitters of the lineup. Usually you see it in that three, four, five spots, but Longwood, a lot of run production at the top of the order. That's a credit to the bottom three as well. So Longwood jumps in front with the RBI single. And now trying to add to it as Clark works behind at one and two. And if you're Winthrop, you've been in this spot before. In fact, trailing in every game of this tournament, they've won three of them in comeback fashion. Now the one-two from Watson. Evens up the count. Love that location, Evan, especially with a hitter with a stance as open as Clark's is. That pitch down and away, especially with two strikes, can be tough to go up and get. Now, she's shown that down and away. Sometimes you see high and tight, that type of pitch, or inside trying to jam her. Let's see what Watson delivers. The rise ball stays fair and into the corner. Here comes Whalen around third. And the Longwood Lancers deliver the first two out blow of the game, make it two to nothing. Well, they tried to go up and in. 
And Boy Clark was ready for it. She sat on it, and Watson misses her spot just a little bit. She didn't miss it by much, but it's a big two-out hit to make it a crooked number. Watch this pitch come in. Keeps her hands inside, doesn't allow it to jam her, and it hugs a little too much of the plate and gets ripped down the line. Waylon, so much speed from second. She easily scores after driving in the first run. She makes it two to nothing. And now on the move, the Lancers running again. And in there safely is Jordan Clark. She's now 20 for 20 this year on the banks. Well, she's just so quick. And, you know, a lot of times, perhaps if there wasn't, the traffic might have been able to think about stretching that into a double. But, man, a really big two out hit. And now a situation where if you get another one, it might produce another. This is Kaylin Bug Batten at the plate. The senior catcher who's been a staple behind the dish for Longwood. And Kathy Riley, she was opening up to us. She loves the impact that Kaylin's had on this program. I just said, you know, I, I sat her down one game. <laughs> and she wasn't really thrilled about it. But she said what she's been most impressed with is how she responded after that. And so many kids they say you know what okay fine and they you know they get upset about it it lets them hang around and coach Riley you know told us before she said it might be one of the better things I've done because she's come back a new hitter one of the things she's had to adjust to career-wise it's been an average well over 300 has struggled a bit at the plate this year but she felt ever since that moment she started to come back to herself in the hitting that she's had throughout her career so now the count works even to Kaylin Bug Batten. She's out of Kenley, North Carolina, which is only 25 miles away here from Bowie's Creek. And a home reunion of sorts for Bug Batten, the senior, trying to win her third conference title in a four year stretch. The 2 2. And the senior continues to fight off good pitches. Well, it was the senior class that Coach Riley says, especially the underclassmen, have sort of embraced. They understanding the disappointment of not getting to this game a year ago, and saying, "All right, we for our six seniors, we got to get there, and give them a chance to walk out with another title." And they've sort of embraced that role, and here they are. Longwood lost in the semifinal game last year to Radford. Here they are playing for a title in 2019. And Kaylin Bug Batten, who's been a huge piece of this entire run, works the count full. Really tough take on the outside corner. Good change. But watch it drift just offside. And now Watson's got to come to her. Madison Watson surrendered two runs in the inning. Now trying to get out of a jam. Walker on the charge, and she can't get there. Tori Walker giving her entire body, but unable to make the catch. That is a long, long way to go trying to make that catch down the line. Love the hustle here. Watch, she gets a great jump, and it just falls short. I love that extension trying to reach out, and there's the competitor right there. Upset she didn't get there, knows how close that was and how big it could have been to take the bat out of Batten's hand in the inning. So the at-bat continues for Kaylin Bug Batten. Another high fly ball. And a little souvenir for a couple of those kids. As we have a wonderful ball game here. Championship Saturday in the Big South. The top seed in the regular season champs in Longwood, who really steamrolled through the conference 20 and 6 against the Winter Beagles, who are the four seed and have won two straight elimination games to get us to this point. Called strike three, and Watson strikes out Bug Batten. We go to the fourth. It's Winthrop chasing two runs here in the Big South Championship game. 